Got another question for the equilibrium walkthroughs playlist, so we're up to number six now. So this question covers KC, KP and Le Chatelier's principle. I hope you liked the video. If you haven't already subscribed, why don't you think about subscribing? As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So you'll notice I've written the ICE acronym down because this is an ICE calculation. So the first thing we need to do is work out the initial moles of the uh, reactants and product. So we're starting with 1.2 moles of nitrogen, 3.6 moles of hydrogen, and obviously at the start there won't be any ammonia. And then we're told the equilibrium mixture contains 0.16 moles of ammonia. So that'll go there. So that means that the ammonia has increased from 0 to 0.16, so it's increased by 0.16 moles. So if we look at the ratio, the nitrogen, half as many moles of the nitrogen is going to react. So this is going to drop by 0.08, which means that at equilibrium there will be 1.12 moles left. The hydrogen, if you look at the ratio, it's 1 to 3 for nitrogen to hydrogen. So that's going to drop by 3 times 0 0.08, 0 0.24 moles. So that means at equilibrium there's going to be 3.36 left. Now you'll notice I've highlighted the volume of the containers, 8 decimeters cubed, because we don't use equilibrium moles in the KC expression, we use the equilibrium concentrations. So the last thing we need to do is divide all these moles by 8. Moles over volume gives concentration. So that means the equilibrium concentration of nitrogen is 0 0.14, 0 0.42 for the hydrogen, and 0 0.02 for the ammonia. So what we need to do is put these amounts into the KC expression. So there's the KC expression there. There's those equilibrium concentrations in. And so KC comes out at 0 0.0386. Next thing we need to do is calculate the units. So if we think about the units here, we've got moles per decimeter cube squared on the top, moles per decimeter cube to the power of four on the bottom. So that'll cancel down to one over moles per decimeter cube squared. So all we need to do is take that onto the top, which gives units of dm to the six mole to the minus two. So moving on to the second part of the question where I've got to talk about operational conditions the industry will use. How might they be different from the ones required for a maximum equilibrium yield for ammonia? So you'll notice I've included the delta H value there. So the first thing we'll do is talk about what Le Chatelier's principle would suggest for a maximum yield. So we'll start with temperature. Forward reaction is exothermic, that minus sign there for the delta H. So a low temperature would promote the forward reaction and give a high yield of ammonia. And then if we think about pressure, we're looking at the moles of gas on each side of the equation. So we've got four moles of gas on the left, only two on the right. So a high pressure will favour the forward reaction because there's less moles on the right hand side. So is industry likely to use these conditions? Well, if we think about temperature, problem with a low temperature is the rate of reaction would be low. So industry is likely to increase the temperature to increase the rate. And then if we think about pressure, industry is probably going to drop the pressure a little bit because there's increased um, safety hazard with high pressures. So they'll operate probably at a lower pressure to improve the safety. So there's that written up there. Moving on to part B now, so we're told that when the temperature is decreased, the value of Kp for this equilibrium decreases. So what that's telling us is that the low temperature must be favouring this reverse reaction. Kp decreases means that the reaction's gone backwards. And then if we think about just the Chatelier's principle, a decrease in temperature will always favour the exothermic reaction. So that means the reverse reaction is exothermic. We were asked about the forward reaction, so that means the forward reaction must be endothermic. So moving on to the last bit of the question, it's a little bit tricky this because you've got to look really carefully at the equilibrium. So if you think about pressure effect, it's always linked to the moles of gas 
on each side of the equilibrium. So if we focus on the G state symbols, we've got four moles of hydrogen and four moles of steam. So there's the same number of moles of gas on each side of the equilibrium. So pressure will not affect the position of this one. So student two was right to disagree. Well done if you got that one right. I think that's a little bit tricky, that one.